Hi, thank you for using My Court Coach. I'm Jalen and I'm going to be your instructor as we talk about address confidentiality. One of the reasons as to why you would want your address to be confidential is if you are a victim of domestic violence, sex trafficking, um, stalking, human trafficking, or elder or dependent adult abuse. And I'm reading this right off of Family Code Section 6205. So that's where this address confidentiality stems from. So this address of confidentiality section tells us to go through the Secretary of State because the Secretary of State is going to provide a name and address of confidentiality for victims of those um, items I just mentioned. So you would go to sos.ca.gov backslash registries dash safe dash home backslash applicants and so in order for you to apply you'd have to be again a victim of domestic violence or a household member of a victim of a domestic violence or you're part of a reproductive health care facility um, and you're in fear of your safety or the safety of a minor child or an adult an incapacitated adult so in order for you to apply, you'd have to find an enrolling agency. So these are agencies that will provide a confidential address on your behalf. So you look to any one of these counties, we're just gonna randomly select one, Sacramento. Okay, first one that comes up, you're gonna go ahead and call this 916 number and contact the community for peace and tell them your situation and that you are looking for a confidential address um, as part of the safe at home program so the safe and if you wanted to read a little bit more about the safe at home program um you could click on safe at home and you can find it but their their main objective is to provide free of charge california residents um a confidential address so it's supposed to help the victim not be tracked down and might be out of harm's way from a abuser so the courts want to make sure that if you do have a, res a residential address they don't want the other party to know about then you at least need to have a mailing address of some sort and so you can go through the safe at home program through the secretary of state to obtain that now what if you have a minor child and you're filing a restraining order on their behalf well if you're doing that and you want to keep not only their address confidential but everything about them confidential then you would need to fill out this request to keep minors information confidential and again it says specifically right here that if you only want to keep your home address confidential then you can just use a mailing address on other forms rather than using this form. But if you're trying to do more than that for your minor child, then you're going to have to go through some hurdles. And some of those hurdles are, well, first we want to ask, tell the court, what is it exactly that you want to keep confidential from the, the court? or from the public because restraining orders are public information. Anybody has access to them, they can get your name and address and other identifying information. So maybe you want the minor's child, the minor child's name to not be listed on the restraining order. So the courts can actually use letters for the minor child. Um, you don't want the address for the child to be made public. You don't want information relating to the minor child to be listed. So for example, if there was some identifying information of the minor child that was in your request for a restraining order, then you would go ahead and list that information here. And it tells you they have to be just very specific. And this information is gonna stem from the DV100. And so if there's like page one, section five, B, you would write page one, section five, line item B and write the information that you do want redacted to be removed to be blacked out so that the public doesn't have access to this information. Now the reasons for your request has to meet all four of these factors and so the minor's right to privacy overcomes the public right to access the information. There's a substantial probability that the minor's interest will be prejudiced if the information is not kept confidential.
And so to go over these two points, the right to privacy of the minor child is more superior than the public's right to access this information. So you essentially need to explain the, to the court, you know, why should this information be provided, be kept confidential or private from the public? So you have to come up with a reason as to why that child's um, safety is more important than the public's information on this child. And then the substantial probability, the very, very strong likelihood that this child would be harmed if the information is not kept confidential. You have to meet that standard. And then the order to keep the information confidential on about the child is narrowly tailored. So it's, it's specific to this particular child. And there's no other way to maintain the confidentiality of this child in order to maintain their privacy. So the child has to meet all four of these requirements and these questions would help you answer those um, those requirements um, or at least to apply those requirements to your answers. And then the next thing, if let's say the court denies your request to keep all the information about the minor child uh, confidential. They want to know, are you going to want to cancel your restraining order then? Or do you still want to move forward with your restraining order? Now, there's a different section about keeping the confidentiality of the child uh, address and information from the abuser, the restrained person. So you could um, have their name, their address, and any information related to the minor child that you don't want the other party to know. And you would also have to list out why is this important to keep the information confidential um, and not be released to the other party or to the abuser. And then what do you think is going to happen if the court does, in fact, allow this information to be released to the other party? And then if, if for any reason the court denies your request to keep this child's information from the abuser, would you still want to continue with the restraining order or would you want to uh, proceed with the restraining order? So you complete this entire form and you submit it with your request for a restraining order that's prepared on behalf of your child and the court will uh, decide in um, at the same time that they decide your restraining order. We hope that you found this video helpful and thank you for your time.